Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got another Epiphone here for an Epiphone adventure. This is another one from the Prophecy series called the Futura FX, except for this one's also an EX at the same time. So just to recap here, the Prophecy series, they're modern customs. They're high-end Epiphones geared towards the metal market. They'll have bound bodies and necks with quilt maple top veneers. The biggest feature is 24 jumbo frets on a satin finished slim neck. And the first series of these came with these blade inlays. They offered them in Les Paul SG, Futura, and EM2 body styles. If you want to learn a little bit more about each of those four models, check out this video that I did earlier this week. But let's talk about the Epiphone Futura. So what exactly is this shape anyways? Where did it come from? Is it something new? No, it's actually really old. This is what the Explorer first looked like in its prototype stages. Yes, there is a 50s Futura out there. It's kind of a goofy, bizarre looking Karina thing, but they have found it. It did exist. It's not just a rumor, unlike the Modern at this point in time. So Epiphone isn't crazy in making this. This one actually has quite an interesting story to it. This is one of the prototypes for this run. So the Prophecy series, it's a fairly popular one. So having a prototype on the show, that's really cool to me. I bought this from Marco Coconut, the same guy that I bought the infamous Gibson Jimi Hendrix Strat from. And he used this guitar on several of his instructional DVDs, such as his Metallica one. So while the Prophecy series was introduced in 2008, you can see the serial number of this dates to 2007. So being a prototype, is there anything special about this guitar? Yes. This is the only Black Cherry Futura that has a Floyd Rose on it. In the production run, they had the FX in a Midnight Ebony finish. And then the EX was the exact same guitar, still had the EMG pickups, but it had a stop bar tailpiece. So that is the biggest thing that makes this one unique as it's pretty much your only chance to purchase one of these if you love this finish and you need the Floyd Rose. So that makes this one the Prophecy Futura FX EX because it has the EX's finish with the FX's Floyd. Another small difference is the strap button placement. Some of them have them up here. Some of them have them on the back. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So that's not necessarily something that's only prototype status. Another cool feature is the pickguard is metal. I don't believe the production run has that. I could be wrong though. And the Epiphone website says these are rosewood fretboards. This one looks ebony to me. However, the ones that are advertised as rosewood also look ebony. So I don't know, maybe they were just dyeing it or something. And the only other difference I saw is the production ones have like these two little cutouts right here on the back plate, whereas this one did not. The specs of these instruments are solid mahogany backs with a quilt maple veneer. This one, I'm not even sure it's a real wood veneer because it sure doesn't seem to move. Usually quilt will at least move a little bit. So that's a little bit disappointing on this, but man, it's very tiger flamey right there. But it has what appears to be an ebony fretboard. Again, I could be wrong. And you have the mahogany neck. So now my impressions of it. Things that I thought were good with this instrument is you have really nice upper fret access. Having 24 frets and this extra little scoop here, it seems to work out really well. You can easily get to 22 frets. The 23rd fret is possible, but the 24th, it's a little bit too crammed because this part of the cutaway kind of gets in your way. You almost need that Jason Hook little scoop right here to make it completely accessible. Obviously, this thing just looks amazing. And another thing that's awesome, out of all the Prophecy series, it's only the Futuras that got black binding. I think they should have just done black on all of the Prophecy runs. The jumbo frets, same as on that Les Paul. I love these things. They're tall, but not too tall, so you're not bending your notes out of tune. And this thing balances really well on a strap. Now the strap button is kind of in a weird place down here. I don't believe that's where the production run puts it, but yeah, that's where it's at on this one. So it just happens to work. But what are the bad things about this guitar? I don't suggest this guitar to anyone. It was not comfortable to really play because it is stupidly heavy. This thing is 11 pounds. 
that's insane for a modern era instrument. I mean, it's this huge slab of mahogany here. It's all in the body. It's a real workout just, you know, showing you guys this instrument. And putting it on a strap, yeah, it balances pretty well, but it's still very chunky. So if you don't like heavy guitars, don't even dare touch one of these things. I'm not sure if they fixed this ridiculous weight issue in the production runs. So if you own one of the regular ones, please let me know how much yours weighs because I can't believe Epiphone would really make 11 pound guitars today. The next thing is these have a satin neck from the factory, which in my last video I said, hey, that's great because they're gonna be a little bit less sticky to play as you're starting to sweat and whatnot. But now that I've actually had one of these, I hate this satin neck. It's actually sticky for some reason. I'm not sure if that's just because this instrument has been played a lot, because Marco used this extensively. I mean, look at the picture of the fretboard before I cleaned it here. But something about it, it just made it even stickier. It wasn't very comfortable to play. The Floyd Rose was a little bit stiff, but I think you can adjust that. I don't know what I'm doing with the Floyd Rose, so I can't really fault the guitar for that. This thing needs a setup. There's some relief in the neck, but I don't have the proper tool to adjust this one. So I can't really fault this guitar for the playability issues. The action was just a little bit too high for my personal tastes, but I think that's all adjustable. But even if everything was easy to play, I think the weight just ruins this one. But let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts before getting to the playing demo. All right, we've got some interesting stuff here. So EMG pickups, as we learned in like the Zach Wild episodes, they're just quick connects, so they come out pretty easily. So I just do that. That way we can get a good look at these control cavities here. There's not too much going on here. Just like the last one, you got the black shielding paint, uh, not a super long tenon, but you know, the neck is pretty deep into the body already at that point. And same thing with the bridge pickup. Speaking of the pickups, you have the Made in USA EMG 81 in the bridge position and the 85 in the neck position. Here's what the route for the toggle switch looks like, but this is what I found super interesting here. You hear that? This is actually a metal pick guard. I was definitely not expecting that. As far as the tremolo unit goes, it looks like you have a genuine Floyd Rose on it, not any type of license thing or anything, the real deal. We have the return of the ruby tipped knobs. I'm happy to say that these ones, they actually stay on. I can't rip those off like the other ones. So that's nice, right? You do have 24 frets on this ebony fretboard. There is like a really small like impression slash chip out of the ebony fretboard there. And you can see some other light tooling marks, but you know, for the most part, it was definitely made pretty well here. The fifth fret inlay is a little bit chewed up though. The headstock itself is pretty basic. You have your truss rod in this channel right there and the Epiphone logo. We have a 1.64 inch nut width, which increases to 1.97 by the 12th. So it's a rather skinny neck as far as the width goes. First fret neck depth of 0.82, but then it beefs up at 0.96 at the 12th. So it's kind of a skinny neck that starts off a little small, but then gets a little bit of beef to it. Kind of an interesting neck profile on this beast. They did stick with a 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. I almost feel like something like this would have done better with like 25 and a half just to make it even more weird. Moving on to the back here, we've got some more interesting things. So I've been looking all over this guitar to find something that proves it's a prototype and I finally found it. No, it's not necessarily in here. We just got our three tiny little pots, but it's on this back plate cover. Now that I think about it, I've seen that once before. So right back here, we have E-Proto, Epi-Proto instrument with the serial number and a barcode and its date of manufacture of 5807. These were released about a year later in 2008. Now this is real easy to open. You just kind of pull on it like that. It's a little lever and then that comes up. Then you just pull on this to get your battery out should you need to. I like that it has its own separate compartment. Just in case it does explode, you're not going to destroy your electronics. And here's what the backside of the Floyd Rose looks like. Again, you just got your shielding paint. Nothing too much going on here. 
mahogany body with a mahogany neck. We still have the satin finish on the neck, so it's interesting to know that that was also there for the prototype version of this instrument as well. Here's where you can keep your Allen keys, but unfortunately they are not there. But here's our serial number, which further proves it was a prototype. DW, again, standing for day one, 07 for 2007, fourth month of the year. So that means April and 970th in production. This is the first time I've seen this. The Grover tuners actually say what type of ratio they have right there, 18 to one. That's kind of cool. And there you go. This thing is just stupidly heavy. 11 pounds, 3.4 ounces. And it's all in the body, so it feels like it's a 20-pound beast. This thing is prohibitively heavy to even play. <laughs> This instrument sounds let's go ahead and review its condition if you're interested in being the next owner of this instrument you can click the link down in the description that also helps support the channel even if you don't buy this guitar so being a prototype it's going to make it a little bit more expensive than like a production run model but as far as the condition goes this thing's definitely been used it wasn't necessarily abused but it was used on a lot so we got the mother of pearl looking epiphone logo you've got some scratches on the face of the headstock from string changes and whatnot as i said earlier the truss rod needs a little bit of a tightening unfortunately none of my allen keys would fit i should probably purchase one of those if i'm going to keep buying these epiphones the frets and fretboard were just cleaned and conditioned. You do have some light fret wear, but nothing that I noticed that would be like detrimental to the playing of the instrument. Beautiful 24 fret fretboard with the blade inlays. And on the face here, you've got lots of picking scratches, you know, handling marks. I did clean this guitar pretty well, but it kind of becomes a dust magnet once I use the Virtuoso stuff. Now right here is a big visual eyesore. Marco doesn't even remember how it happened. He just remembered seeing it one day and being upset. So there is a pretty nasty gouge right there, but it kind of just disappears until you hit it in the light just right. That's definitely the worst thing on the top besides just some polishing swirls and whatnot. Back of the headstock, serial number tells us it was made in the Daewon plant in April of 2007. There's a pretty nasty gouge right here at the top of the headstock. Marco must have dinged it up against something, so you've got that little bit of an eyesore right there. Back of the neck here, nice slim profile, but you've got some wear just from me playing it just now, but I did not notice any like huge nicks or dings. If there is one, I didn't see it. And the back of the instrument, nice and glossy. Again, you've got general handling marks, some light buckle impressions and scratches. Got some wear kind of down in this area, but for the most part, it looks good. Onto the sides of this heavy beast. It's kind of hard holding this thing because I usually like to hold it by the strap buttons, but these are kind of in weird positions. But the strap buttons are definitely replaced. I know that now. Um, the screw is not long enough for this neck one, so it just kind of naturally undoes itself. So you're definitely going to want to install something else on this if you plan to gig it. And you've got lots of light impressions on the sides of this. 
like right here, you can see there's kind of like something where it got impacted and it almost like cracked the finish a little bit is what it kind of looks like, or it could just be a scratch. And you've got other little imperfections. You might be able to polish them off. I never spend too much time on the sides of the instruments. Because, well, you don't see them and they're just gonna get dirty again anyways. So the sides do show nicks and dings and you've got some wear. But overall, I mean, it's not in the worst condition in the world. It could be better. Under black light, not quite as fun as the Epiphone version since we have the black binding, so it doesn't all glow like the neck does here. But everything looks the way I would expect to see. No breaks, cracks, or repairs on this model. But you can see how the finish is starting to wear away. What I would suggest to get rid of this sticky neck thing is just go to town polishing this thing and turn it into a gloss neck like that Les Paul. That thing was such a great guitar. It sold really fast. This one, yeah, I wasn't quite as happy with it, but I think it's just because it was too heavy. But we'll take a quick look around the edges here. Looking good. This instrument comes in an Epiphone branded rectangle case. It's got scratches and scuffs. It's got some dust on it, but everything works the way it should. Now the problem with this case is it is also heavy. So pair a heavy case with a heavy guitar and yeah, you're not gonna have a good time with this thing. <laughs> Definitely get a roadie for this one. The interior is kind of a light gray color. It's not particularly a fantastic case. You've got one neck rest and this kind of acts as a second one, but it could definitely be a better form fit case. Inside your compartment here, you've got a Marco coconut card and it's one of his instructional DVDs. I bet it has the Metallica one on it or something. It definitely fits in the case, no problems. The headstock's not touching the bottom of the case, but as you can see, it slides around. I'll give you some extra bubble wrap to secure it though. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this prototype Epiphone Prophecy Futura, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.